Hi, I'm Craig Phillips, and I'm often asked, what's the most common tools I use around the home? What would I keep in my toolbox? So what I've done is I've gathered together the most everyday tools. First of all, having somewhere to store them. So I'd always recommend a good, solid, sturdy toolbox like that to keep them away nice and safe, but you always know where they are. Now, inside is important too. We've got ourselves a claw hammer for knocking different sized nails in, a nail bar for removing unwanted nails, an adjustable spanner for nuts and bolts and different types of pipe work on plumbing, and a screwdriver set with both long handle ones and also short stumpy ones for the more trickier areas. A set of pliers, long nose pliers, standard pliers, and wire snip pliers. Now if you're doing any carpentry around the house, it's really important to get all your cuts accurately. So I'd always recommend to use yourself a set square to mark up to make sure all your cuts are square. If you cut wood, of course a standard hand saw is ideal, but if you cut different materials like metal or plastics, you're going to have to use a hacksaw like this one. But whatever materials you do choose to cut, it is important to hold them down firmly and safely. So I would always use a quick release clamp like that one. Now, if you're planning on any decorating around the house, preparation is certainly the key to a successful job. But it's always important to have the right tools. I'd always recommend a good, rigid, universal scraper like this one. It's ideal for removing the paper first, and then, of course, filling any holes in it. Any holes that are filled in with filler, they're going to need sanding. So once that's dry, I would always recommend put your sandpaper on a rigid hand sander like this one. It makes them unwanted jobs you don't like doing a lot easier. Once you've sanded down, you might notice you've got some cracks in the ceiling around the top or in the corners. They're going to need filling with an acrylic silicon. Now, I would always recommend the Pro Range one like this. It's got an adjustable nozzle. It allows you to use different size cartridges. So whether it's filler for around the edge or silicon for around the bath and the sink. And then, of course, your trimming knife for cutting your softer materials like your paper, your lino or your carpets. Keep it away in your cover for safety as well. Once all the decorating's finished, you might find that you want to apply some fixtures and fittings to the wall, like shelving. People often ask me, what's the best drill I'd need? What type of drill would I need for drilling walls, ceilings, floors, etc.? So I'd always recommend an 18 volt cordless combinational drill driver like this one. It's ideal for anything. You've got a setting on it for normal drilling in soft materials. You've got a hammer action setting in it for drilling into masonries and brick walls. And then you've got all the torque settings around there for when you're using it as a hand screwdriver. Now, if you've got a combinational drill like that, you're also going to need a comprehensive set of drill bits like this one for drilling different types of materials, from metal to wood to plastic to masonry, even flat spade pieces like that for more intense carpentry work. Now, before you drill into any surface, it's always important to know what's behind there. So I'd recommend a detector like this one. Sometimes you need to find the stud work behind the plastic to get a firm fixing. You can set it on stud, glide it across the wall, and the alarm will go off when it finds it. It'll also find any unwanted things that you don't want to drill in, like, of course, water pipes or electric cables. Once you have drilled successfully and you want to apply a screw, of course, you're going to need to put a plug in there first if it's a brick wall or plaster work. But of course, locating your item to the wall is equally as important. So it's always wise to use a good, reliable tape measure like this one. And then, of course, getting it level too. But last and certainly not least, the most important tool for me to have in my toolbox is the Silverline catalog with over 5,000 different products to be used around the home and garden. If you'll plan any DIY task in the near future, you may need a little bit of advice on tools or some top DIY tips. Well, visit silverlinetools.com. Fire your question away to me, and I'm sure with over 20 years' experience in building and DIY, I'll be able to help you with the answers that you need to complete your own DIY tasks.